Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah a question was asked can we befriend <coughs> lay people who have deviant beliefs can you please make a video on how we should treat the general Muslims with deviant beliefs and mention the narrations as well it's not that I doubt you I just like to hear evidence Allah uh, yubarak fikum first and foremost in fact this is really a fairly complex question and I just want to bring up a few points and at the end I want to say that you should that you should ask the people of knowledge if you do not know and that you should write this question have it forwarded to someone who can ask for you if you don't have any scholars that you can access or students of knowledge that are readily available uh, go to those who you trust in regards to this matter so first one thing I want to say is that uh, regarding can we befriend people who have deviant beliefs first and foremost Ahl al the, the people of knowledge and I'm just going to give you based on my studies that they mention that and, and the waqa as well the reality is that Ahl al-Sunnah tafawat wa Ahl al-Bid'ah tafawat that the people of the Sunnah they have different levels and the people of Bid'ah have different levels meaning people have different levels in their adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and people have different levels in their deviance from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this is why the scholars when they talk about Ahl al-Bid'ah they also talk about one of the classifications is talking about Bid'ah Mukaffara or Bid'ah Ghayr Mukaffara Bid'ah which takes you out of the fold of Islam and Bid'ah which does not take you full out of the fold of Islam that there are different levels of innovation and I think all of us are aware of that as far as uh, the general Muslims uh, another point I want to mention is to be cautious about the excessive labeling because a lot of times what has happened in the past we can only speak about an experience and, and, and what we've seen is that many people claim that those people who don't attend their masjid those people who don't take from the du'a that they listen to or what have you khalas, they're already written off they're already deviant they're already misguided and this is uh, something we have to be cautious of uh, because in fact at times that can lead to hizbiya can lead to the opposite thing that you're trying to that which you're trying to flee from you're trying to flee from starting groups and sectarianism but in fact you make a, an elitism for yourself and your crew and your group and so on and so forth and make al wala wal bara based upon that. So this is a point that we have to be careful. So if in reality someone is deviant, one of the uh, things the scholars also mention is that that the and you'll find this in the text of Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. So you can go back to some of the things that we've translated, and a, a, a lot of these issues I think are already on the internet, of course, uh, especially on Salafi websites in English as well, and. There's a lot of kalam of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah where he mentions, uh, and, and prior to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah anyway, the Salaf, they did divide uh, an Ahla Hadith between uh, a da'i ila bid'a and uh, you know, the lay person who practices bid'a or, or, or a person who's not a ghayr da'i, the, the, the person who is a caller to bid'a and the person who doesn't call and that your mu'amalat with them is also different. And the again, this is a big mess, Allah. But uh, when it comes to befriending, I'm assuming you mean going to have tea with, sitting with, and so forth. I don't know if you're referring to just giving salams or what. But in general, as far as the general Muslims, you should treat them and give them salams and treat them with goodness. And if it is in your maslaha or the maslaha of that person then the ahkam of hajr uh, comes into play as far as uh, uh, cutting someone off and not giving them salams meaning that you're afraid for your deen with regards to them because maybe you have little knowledge or something even if they're a lay persons but if they're a lay persons and they're all every time you sit with them they're talking about the governments they're talking about this and this and this every time you know they're excessive and then you may find that it's better for you and your religion to be away from that person unless you can get, engage them based on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in essence giving them da'wah. So that's one point. Uh, or 
perhaps they are affected by you and that by making hajar of them, this will bring them back to good. So this is what, you know, when you use a term befriending the people, I'm giving you general principles from, uh, in general, the scholars, from what we study from the scholars. As far as the narrations, I'll leave that to you to go into, but I just want to leave you with the most important narration, which is that of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because we're ordered to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not individuals of the Salaf. This is not take away from the Salaf, but we have to understand what the Salafi Minhaj is. The Salafi Minhaj is a madhab or a methodology for how we understand the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we don't, for example, take just the narration of the Salaf and say, oh, the Salaf did this from one narration, from one whole of uh, one of the Salaf, unless, of course, it's, you know, it's something which they have consensus on or, uh, you know, is a well-known principle amongst the Salaf in general. But we have to be careful that we are obligated to follow, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعْتِيُوا رَسُولُ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And we understand how to obey Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and what is uh, codified from the text as far as how to practice is Islam uh, from the minhaj or the methodology of the Salaf, how they understood those Masail. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِيَّاكُمُ الظَّنْ فَإِنَّ الظَّنْ أَكْذِبُ الْحَدِيثِ وَلَا تَحَاسِدُ وَلَا تَبَاغَدُ وَلَا تَدَابَرُ وَلَا إلا آخر حديث وكن عباد الله إخوانا وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه ولا ولا تجاسسوا and do not he said إياكم وظن beware of suspicion for very suspicion is the worst of speech or the worst of actions and then he said you know and do not have envy and do not cut one another off and do not uh, turn your backs on one another and do not uh, and do not um, do a type of, uh, of, of riba or it's a type of trade where you buy uh, at the expense of your brother uh, and then at the end of the hadith the Prophet ﷺ said and be brothers you know be uh, brothers uh, O Muslims so we learn from this that the asal is, is that we should we are brothers and that you should not go to the masajid in your locality for example you're in america and go and say everyone's from ahl bid'ah for example even if it's a tabliqi masjid the ones who mainly run it and their activities is jamaat tabliq you don't go and say that that make a hukum on every individual they're muqtadi in that masjid and that you're going to cut everyone off no that's not from hikmah that's not from wisdom and that's not an illustration of the method of the salaf but in fact, you're, there's many uh, things to consider. And as far as this, this is like almost a big series of lessons and so forth. So I'll advise you to, again, ask one of the ulama uh, or go to one of the trusted web websites that probably, I'm sure, have dealt with this question. And, we, and anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.